No matter where you look, the Chicago Bears are being slandered by the national sports media. Some of this slander is deserved, I have to admit, even as a Bears fan, because if you look at the season we had last year, we performed dramatically below expectations. I mean, practically everybody had us reaching the playoffs or making a deep playoff run or some even reaching the Super Bowl, but we did not even come close to doing that, okay? We finished with an 8-8 record, mired in mediocrity, and our offense just regressed severely. Trubisky did not take that next step. He actually regressed um, as well as the rest of our offense. So it was a terrible year. And I get why the Bears do not get respect right now from the national media. I get why they're hesitant to, you know, predict us to have a winning record next year. Because we did kind of prove them wrong last year. So they're obviously not going to be on our side now. But some of the ridiculous things that I've been hearing so far... Just make me wonder how credentialed some of these media members actually are. You want to know some of the absolutely idiotic things that media members have said about the Chicago Bears over the past couple weeks? They have said that Khalil Mack is not a top five edge rusher. They have said that Allen Robinson is not a number one wide receiver um, in this league. They have said that Eddie Jackson is not a top 10 safety. Some have predicted the Bears to go 3-13 next season. I mean, um... Matt Miller thinks that the Bears are the second worst team in the NFL right now. People think that our secondary is not that good. People think our defense is going to regress. I mean, people have been making these ridiculous, baseless claims about our team that have no truth in reality, okay? I get if you want to be down on the Bears. I get if you don't want to predict us to have a winning record or if you don't want to predict us to make the playoffs. I'm cool with that, okay? But when you start making claims such as Eddie Jackson not being a top 10 safety or Khalil Mack not being a top five edge rusher, do you even know football, man? Like, that's the stuff that Bears fans have had to deal with over the past couple weeks. But in this video, guys, I'm going to tell you why all of this is actually a good thing for the Chicago Bears. Why all of this media slander is going to actually turn out to be the most beneficial thing for this franchise this year. What is up guys? I'm back with another Bears offseason discussion video. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more Bears content, more Bears analysis videos, news videos, highlight videos. I keep up with everything Bears related, so subscribe if you want all of that uh, news on your feed. But guys, in this video, like I mentioned just right now, I'm going to be discussing why the media slander that the Bears have been getting so far this offseason is going to turn into the best blessing that the Bears could receive this year. In my lifetime, okay, I've been watching football since pretty much 2005, 2006. I was born in 1999, so I really only remember football um, from 2005 and onwards. Even though I did watch a little bit before, I was just too young to even understand the game. So I've been watching football since about 2005. And in my lifetime, every single time that I've been hyped about the Bears for the next season, every single time that you know, you know the media has been hyping up the Bears, thinking that the Bears are going to be good, I have been let down every single time without fail. There are four major instances I can think of this happening. The first was in 2007, right after our 2006 Super Bowl year where we could have won that Super Bowl, man, if we only had a decent quarterback. The next season, I was still hyped about the team. I thought that we would still make a playoff run. Even though we did lose a lot of people into the next offseason, I think we lost like 10 players from the 2006 roster heading into 2007. I still thought we could have... A decent team at least makes some type of a playoff run, even if it was not like a deep one. But man, did we disappoint. We finished last in the NFC North, uh, finished with a 7-9 record. Like pretty much everything that could have went wrong did go wrong. And it was just an extremely disappointing year. And that was my first taste of just absolute disappointment being a Bears fan. Um, the next moment like this was in 2011, right after a 2010 season where we had such a good chance to make the Super Bowl, but Jay Cutler's injury, man, it just kept us out. So the next season, heading into 2011, I was so freaking hyped. I thought that next season, it was going to be the year. We made some improvements in some key areas. We we're going to go all the way. And at the beginning of the season, it was looking like that could be possible, okay? We were 7-3, and three, I think top of the NFC North, maybe close to top of the NFC. And then Jay Cutler goes down with a thumb injury, and we only win one game for the entire rest of the year. That was one of the most disappointing moments 
of my lifetime being a Bears fan because I legitimately thought we were going to go all the way that year. The media was hyping us up, but we could not survive the loss of our quarterback. And we just got unlucky that year, okay? Because if Jay Cutler was healthy, we could have actually went far. But what could go wrong did go wrong, obviously, because it is the Chicago Bears. And whenever we have the media on our side, we don't perform for whatever reason. The next instance I can remember like this was in 2014, uh, right after Mark Tressman's first year in Chicago. We finished with an 8-8 record in his first season. Our offense looked pretty explosive. It was one of the better offenses in the entire NFL. I mean, there were a lot of games where we scored like 30 or 40 points even. So it was one of the better offenses that I've seen in my life being a Bears fan. The only problem with that season was our defense was absolute garbage. You saw in the last game of the season, I mean, that blown coverage by Chris Conti. We were just so close to making the playoffs, but the next season in 2014, I was really hyped about that year. I thought that we did make some upgrades on defense to finally make that defense at least mediocre, um, at least average so that we can win with this pretty good offense. But what happens in 2014? Our offense absolutely implodes. Our defense implodes even harder, becoming the worst defense in franchise history, and we become the national laughing stock of the entire NFL, allowing 50 points in back-to-back games, allowing 42 at halftime to the Packers. That was the most embarrassed I've ever been as a Bears fan in my life. But in that same season at the very beginning, I was so hyped about that team. I thought that we were going to go far and the media was picking us to make the playoffs as well. So that was another instance of the Bears just absolutely letting me down after I became so hyped for that team and obviously we all know the last since since 2019 last season man i cannot remember a time where i was more hyped for an upcoming season than i was for 2019 i mean i was just completely high on the bears watching bears videos every single day making bears highlight videos making hype videos left and right I was like living off the high of 2018 and I really thought, legitimately thought with all my heart in my brain as well that the Bears were going to make a deep playoff run and win the Super Bowl that season. And that was not even a ridiculous claim to make. That was not even me being a homer because practically all of the media also believed in us. We were like top five in the power rankings. I mean, everybody thought that the Bears were going to be a really damn good football team that year. Some even predicting them to make the Super Bowl and win it. And what do we do? We regress in almost every single way possible on offense. And our defense does not retain the same level of dominance it had in 2018. Okay, obviously last season falls more on the offense. Our offense was one of the worst in the entire NFL. And we could have went far with this defense um, if we had an actual good offense. But the defense was also not without blame. We finished among the bottom half of the league in turnovers and sacks, I believe, as well. Maybe not sacks, but definitely turnovers. But whatever the case was, guys, we regress in every single way possible. We had a horrible year, even though we did finish 8-8. Eight and eight, That was nowhere close to good enough after the season we had in 2018. So it was yet another instance of the Bears absolutely letting their fan base down, letting the media down after everybody believed in them. What does all of this tell us about the Chicago Bears? It tells us that this is a franchise that thrives on being the underdog. They thrive on catching teams by surprise. They thrive on being doubted, on not being picked to win. And that's just the personality, I guess, of our entire franchise, at least in my lifetime, okay? And definitely of this team. If you look at the players we have on this team, I really feel like their mentality, their, you know, drive to win, it's at their best when they are not picked to win. And you may think that I'm crazy saying that. You may think that, no, these players, they don't care about what the media says. I mean, they're, they're professionals, right? They don't even listen to the media. That could not be more false. I know that players say in, like, locker room interviews and in, like, media interviews that we don't really care what the outside says. We're shutting all of that out, okay? We're going to go dark on social media. We're not going to listen to what anybody else says, right? It's going to be only us and the team. But guys, that's just not how real life works, okay? These players are human beings too. They have opinions too. They have feelings too. And as much as we hate to admit it, I mean, the media does impact their mentality to some extent. It's just in the world we live in right now, it's impossible to shut out the media completely. Everybody was picking the Bears to win next year. They had dramatically high expectations. Anything short of making a deep playoff run was bound to be a failure. 
And you could tell that pressure was on the shoulders of every single player on our roster last season. And when you have that much pressure on your shoulders, when you have that much of a target on your back, every single opposing team, they're going to try their absolute hardest when they play you. I mean, that's just how the NFL works, okay? If you are a great football team, if you are like at the top of the game, everybody is going to try their absolute hardest to bring you down. And obviously, they succeeded in doing that. And they also took great pleasure in doing that as well. You look at a team like the Saints, man, they were making fun of Tariq Cohen and his height. You take a look at the Packers in the first game of the season. They're talking mad trash. I mean, all these teams that um, we could have beat in 2018 and some that we did beat in 2018, they were out for blood for us in 2019 because they remembered that sting of defeat. I honestly think that in 2019, our entire team got a little bit too carried away with all that club dub stuff from last season. We got a little bit too cocky. We got a little bit too arrogant thinking that, oh, everything is rainbows and sunshine. We're going to be fine next season. We're going to go all the way. We're going to be a dominant team. We're going to scare the shit out of everybody. We're going to be good next year. But we did not actually prove that on the field, okay? We spent the entire offseason hyping ourselves up, having that 100th um, anniversary celebration. Just everything was so perfect that offseason. But it affected our mentality in a negative way because we did not have that edge that we had in 2018. In 2018, our entire team became warriors. They became battlers against the entire world, against the entire league. They wanted to prove everybody wrong so freaking badly. Every single player on that team. And that's just a personality of the players on our team as well. You take a look at a guy like Trubisky. He was called a bust in 2017. He wanted to prove everybody wrong. And to some extent, he did. In 2018, you take a look at a guy like Kyle Fuller, who a lot of people thought he was a bust early on in his career. He wanted to prove everybody wrong. He became a pro bowler that year, an all-pro player as well. You take a look at a guy like Tariq Cohen, who was doubted his entire life for his height. He wanted to prove people wrong. I mean, a guy like Akeem Hicks, who did not have any success in the NFL um, early on. Um, it, it was a struggle for him to even get to the NFL, and then he became an all-pro player as well. I mean, there were so many players on our team that year that were doubted their entire lives, and they took out all of that anger collectively on the opposing teams. That was the personality of our team. That was the DNA of our team, us against the world. We want to prove everybody wrong. Nobody believes in us, but we are going to believe in ourselves. That is when the Chicago Bears have been at their best. And it makes sense, honestly, because even I can relate to times playing sports growing up where, you know, there's just a certain mentality you have being the underdog team. When you're going up against the number one team in the state or the number one team in the conference, when nobody is picking you to win, when the opposing players and coaches are laughing at you, they're talking trash at you, they think that they're going to win, they think they're so hot and good, you are going to lay it all out on the field to beat that team. You're going to do whatever it takes to beat that team because you have that edge in your entire team. When everybody on your team believes in that underdog role, when everybody on that team believes in that us against the world mentality, that is a dangerous thing. And that's how so many teams in the NFL have won Super Bowl championships. Philadelphia Eagles, man, in 2017, they took that underdog mentality to the next level. They actually had masks that they wore, dog masks that they wore to every single playoff game because they believed in that underdog role so heavily. You know, nobody gave them a chance to win that playoff run. I mean, they lost their starting quarterback, Carson Wentz. Like, how were they going to beat the teams like the Falcons, the Vikings, the Patriots in the Super Bowl? There was no way they were going to win that, right? Well, the team collectively came together and said, screw the entire rest of the NFL, screw the media. We do not care what they say. We are going to prove all of them wrong. And they did. Some teams are just built like that, and I think the Chicago Bears are one of those teams. If you give them too much of a spotlight in the media, if you start talking them up too much, they're not going to have that same edge that they had when you doubted them, when you hated them. So honestly, man, I know it sounds crazy to say right now, but I am really loving that the entire media, sports media, is hating on the Bears right now. They're all against us. Nobody believes in us. They all think we're going to be a bad football team. They're bad-mouthing every single player on our roster, talking mad shit about literally every single player from Khalil Mack to Eddie Jackson to Mitch Trubisky. Everybody is under attack. But guess what, guys? All of these guys next season, I'm calling it right now, they're going to collectively come together and say, screw the NFL, screw the media. 
We are going to prove everybody wrong together. Nobody believes in us except ourselves. We're going to have that same edge we had in 2018. We added some more talent. You know, our defense has more talent now than it had in 2018 even. Our offense is looking a lot better than 2018. We have all the talent. We have all the pieces. Now we just need the mentality to come together and we're going to accomplish that and make everybody else look like absolute idiots. So Bears fans, next time you see an NFL talk show slandering your team, next time you see an NFL media member talking bad about one of your players, thank them. Thank them for the motivation because this is the motivation that we need to ultimately bring us to the top again. That's all I wanted to say in this video, guys. Let me know if you agree with what I'm saying here in the comments down below. I'll be really interested to see your opinions on this, but as always, guys, bear down. Bear down.